In this episode of Viral Rewind, we're going to look at a Win 9X virus called Shurek. Now, Shurek is here on the desktop, and it actually comes as a fairly large Windows executable file. See so here, it's 314 kilobytes, and it's basically a shockwave movie that's gotten the Shurek virus embedded into it so that when it runs, You'll see the Shockwave Flash interactive movie here in a moment, but it'll be loading the Shurek virus in the background infecting files. Now on this computer we're going to make use of something which will help us out a little bit in looking at this virus and maybe future viruses as well called Tiny Watcher. So I have Tiny Watcher here and it's already done a scan on the system so it's already logged its current condition. So if I tell it to do a quick check it's probably not going to tell me anything it's changed on the computer yet. And this is just a quick check. It can do a deep scan, which scans pretty much all critical files. But as I can see there, there is no dialog box or any window, so it hasn't detected any file changes. So before I run Shurek, one thing I need to do is change the date. Now, Shurek has two different payloads. One doesn't really care about the initial infection date, the other one does. So I need to change this to the first of the month. So it's August 30th right now, but the second payload needs the initial infection to be on the first, second, or third day of the month. So I'm changing it to the first for this purpose. Click on OK. And then we come over to Shurek and we'll open it. And you know, we get this little interactive shockwave flash movie, and I'll put the translations on the side for you what it's saying. Now you might be able to hear too from the sound, it's not running exactly smooth, and you may even be able to hear the hard drive working, I'm not sure, but the hard drive activity light is going. So you get this little interactive kind of punching game thing. Hey, this guy spouting off at you. And we can do certain things. And now the hard drive activity is pretty much stopped and now it's playing smoothly. So Shurek has gone through and then finished its first infection routine. So while this was in the background, Shurek searched out some files in the system folder. <laughs> and Windows folder and subsequently infected them and now it's pretty much done with it so it's running normally now. <laughs> so, again that's our little flash thing but now I'm going to go ahead and restart the computer let Tiny Watcher do another analysis of the system and we'll look at what's changed. So Windows is booted back up now and when it gets loaded, Tiny Watcher will start and it will run a deep scan. And we'll see after it does that scan that it's going to show us quite a number of files have been changed or modified. And I don't care for McAfee right now. So this is the neat thing about Tiny Watcher for those of you that may want to experiment around with your system or not. It's an interesting little program because as you can see here, now that we've finished the scan, it's showing all these files in the Windows system folder, it says, have been modified. And including several applications in the Windows folder as well. So I can click on it, and it'll tell me that, oh, the file has been modified, and then I can do actions on it. Like I can tell it to remove that file, I can tell it to disable access to that file, confirm it if it's supposed to have been changed and a couple of other options so it it gives you a layer of safety and allows you to see what's been changed and also takes certain actions depending on what's been changed so we're going to use this as a reference because we're going to look at some of these files because this will help spread shoe but also we'll be able to see the payloads now that we know where that is let's look at the first payload and again, we have to restart the computer again, and Tiny Watcher will still show the same changed file, so we'll have that as a reference. So I'm going to jump ahead to January 2021. 
So this will put us several months ahead of the initial infection. And then we'll get to see the first day. So Windows is booting back up, and now it, it thinks it's January 1st, 2021. So we've skipped several months ahead from the initial infection date. So now we're in the threshold where the first payload will activate. And again, depending on the initial infection by Shurek, we may or may not actually get the first payload to come up here during system boot. We may actually have to go search out some of the infected files that Tiny Watcher showed us and activate the payload from there. So Tiny Watcher has finished its scan again. And you may have just heard the computer's cooling fan turn off there. One of the things about Shurek I've noticed during testing of it is it also seems to slow down the system. It puts a lot of load on the CPU and stuff for some reason. So again, the computer fan came on to cool the processor and components, and now it's turned off because the load is done. But I've noticed on some occasions that Shurek causes quite a system slowdown. So again, we've got all our infected programs here. And in fact, there's a couple more infected programs now after the restart than what we had before. Because now I see that direct cable connection, notepad, and task manager, along with the Tour 98 program and NetWatcher, is showing a change. So, Shurek has infected some more files just from that system restart. So, that's this. So now let's try to run one of these infected programs, see if we can get that first payload. And the first payload will be evident when it comes up. So bring up Windows. So let's see, I know that one of them is the direct cable connection. Let's see. Again, listen to the hard drive if you can hear it. Alright, there's activity going on in the background when after loading direct cable connection here. It basically is saying that Shurek is spreading some more. So again, direct cable connection was infected according to Tiny Watcher because it said it's been modified. We've now opened direct cable connection. Shurek is now searching out more files to infect and is subsequently infecting them. And as you see, we just got the first payload. And it's this. Let me get this out of the way. As you saw, all our icons got rearranged, and now they're all running away from the mouse cursor. And if you notice, I can't even draw a box. In the box, there's the computer's fan coming back on again because this is taking up CPU time. So this is the first payload that you get out of Shurek that gives you an indication that your system is infected. So several months after the infection, when one of these infected programs is run, this happens to you with desktop icons. And I believe, let's see if it stops. And when you close out the infected program, the payload stops. So it's not doing it anymore after we enclosed, closed the direct cable connection program because direct cable connection was infected with Shurek. Let me open it again. We'll watch our icons and the payload has resumed. So let's look at now the second and more destructive payload, and this one's going to take a little more effort to get going, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change our date. We're now going to change it to August, so now it's August 2021, so it will be a full year after the infection, provided you hadn't done something to your computer after seeing this, because this will kind of give you an indication something's wrong. But if your computer goes a couple, several more months after where the first payload would trigger, we're now going to get the second more destructive payload. So let me go ahead and restart again. Has it dropped it? Nope, it hasn't yet. 
One thing that Shirek also will do, and I think it occurs with the file deleting Trojan, is it will drop a file here called win.com, pretty much named after the normal windows.com loader from the windows folder, but it's not the same thing. I don't see that yet, so obviously we still don't have the payload. So I'm going to do something a little different here, which tends to guarantee that the second payload works. I'm going to force the computer to open every single executable in the Windows folder. That usually makes it work. It also may crash the system, but by the time that happens, I'm sure the system will not work. Four. Select all. Enter. And now we're going to try to load all 94 programs out of the Windows folder and see if we can get that file deleting Trojan to take effect. So I'm just going to skip ahead when we get to that point. Uh, see, we're getting some indications that file deletion is taking place because Scandisk tried to start up here. And Scandisk says it can't find a certain file it needs to run. That's kind of indicative that we have some files being deleted here. Trying to load the start menu. And the system is a little on the slow side, and I keep hitting it too soon. In fact, at this point, I'm going to try rebooting the system with Control Alt Delete. Because I want to see if Scandisk is having trouble looking for a file. I wonder if we've lost some files at this point. Go ahead and force the restart if we can. Oh, oh this is not going to work. I have to use. Oh, a second. Uh, I don't need that. And look, we have a missing file. VMM32VXD is required to run Windows. If this file is not in your path, you may need to reinstall Windows. Windows has stopped. So we can't even boot into Windows now. Now, depending on the extent of that file deleting Trojan, you might still get into Windows, but then it will say files are still missing and not boot. You may either get different error messages here on boot or... In the case of this one, it's missing the Virtual Memory Manager 32 VXD file. So without that, Windows is not going to operate. So this system has to be restored now.